few things that I wanted to share today. Uh, one, a uh, community post that I came across from Sander Rosemiller on how to automate device group management um, to use for uh, testing during um, when you're testing update rings and piloting and things like that. So he's got a, a nice script here uh, I thought would be good for to share for some of you that may have this same type of testing scenario. Um, basically, having a test group and a number of test deployment rings that you're going to use in your um, uh, Windows Update for Business update rings. And so um, what he has here is some uh, scripts that will take uh, a user and their owned devices and throw those into a device group so that you can assign your um, test update rings to those device groups. Um, really nice stuff here. He also goes through a little bit of batching in Microsoft Graph, which will help uh, speed things up when you are making calls to Graph. Um, so just really nice blog post here. I wanted to make sure that I shared this today. This is one of the um, uh, one of the community uh, posts that I came across over the last week. Great stuff here. Um, a couple of the other things that I saw actually are direct Microsoft posts. Uh, so one, uh, as we've seen here over the last several years, we have um, a lot of the configuration items within Intune have been moving over to the Unified Settings platform, which is the basis for the settings catalog. Um, and that work continues, as noted here by Microsoft, starting July 15th, which was Monday, uh, or soon after. There are a number of templates that they are moving into the Unified Settings uh, um, platform. And if we scroll down here, this is the list of the templates that are moving. Uh, but one thing that I did want to point out is that several of these templates now must be um, configured in the settings catalog. These are the network boundary template, the device restrictions template, and the administrative templates template. Uh, so I actually have a feeling this will be a fairly large usability change or, or user experience change for us. Um, but of course, um, happy to see uh, so many things continue to move towards this um, uh, Unified Settings Platform. Uh, one thing that um, uh, one of my close colleagues has been working on recently is comparing the old security baseline, which was based on templates, um, to the new security baselines, which are based on the uni Unified Settings Platform, and making that comparison, at least in an easy way, um, is... Uh, well, there is no easy way, at least <laughs> that we've found. So if we can continue to push things towards the unified settings platform, I think we're all uh, as admins in much better shape. Uh, at least that's my opinion. And uh, something else I came across from Microsoft um, is this uh, blog post on Windows 11 checkpoint cumulative updates. Uh, so this is something that looks like it's going to be um, released on Windows 11 24H2. And um, I just wanted to dive into this a, a little bit here. Um, so here in the blog post, it says with uh, 24H2, we're introducing a new concept of checkpoint cumulative updates, which will allow us to get uh, features and security enhancements via the latest cumulative update through smaller incremental differentials containing only the changes since the previous checkpoint cumulative update, which um, from this perspective will save time, bandwidth, and hard drive space. There are words here in the blog post. Um, how that differs from what we have today uh, is right here. Today, Windows 11 quality updates use servicing technology and are built cumulatively from the time when a new Windows OS uh, was released to manufacturing. Uh, these monthly updates include all of the changes since RTM in the form of binary differentials computed from the initial version of those binaries. Um, so this is, this is kind of interesting. Uh, today, our cumulative updates essentially contain everything, right? From the latest, if we're on 23H2, 
the July cumulative update will contain all of the changes since 23H2 was released. Um, but now it seems like they're going to shrink those down a, a little bit over the life of a single feature update, um, which I think is interesting. I'm curious to see how this will uh, this will actually affect us from a deployment standpoint um, and how, you know, what happens if we miss a checkpoint or something like that. Uh, I don't know. Have you had the chance to dive into this article at all yet, Johan? It's no, I, I, just, I just saw Mike Terrell share it earlier this week. I, I read the post real quick and like, all right, there will probably be more information about this down the road. And yeah. I'm excited to try it out and see, see how it impacts... Um, I mean, uh, I'm a big fan of, of peering capabilities and whatnot. So as long as I don't mess that up, I'm, I'm all in favor of smaller content. But if, uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. It, exactly. Um, definitely interested to see what we get out of this. Um, one last minute thing that I thought of while we were waiting for the stream to start as well, I should probably mention Um uh, we got a comment on this blog post uh, last week, two weeks ago, um, that if, uh, so on the hydration kits, um, if you were to use the latest 2403 config manager media uh, with the hydration kit, um, Microsoft has changed over to um, using the ODBC driver for SQL Server version 18. Uh, we've known for a while that that was coming, uh, but they updated the latest evaluation media to use 2403, and we did not have that ODBC driver install in the hydration kit. Um, the instructions for adding that has now been, um, uh, sorry, the instructions for getting the content and putting that into the hydration kit have now been added as well as the steps for installing the ODBC driver. And everything in here has been updated to reference um, version 2403 of Config Manager. So if this was uh, an issue that you were running into, um, I just wanted to mention that. And thank you, Johan, for calling out this comment to me uh, last week. Um, oh, of course, thank you for putting in the work. Uh, I could just not relax. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a well-deserved relaxation. Uh, <laughs> definitely. Um, so the uh, same fix will be coming to the 2019 hydration kit here as well soon. Uh, it's just a matter of sitting down and, and doing the work. But uh, I wanted to make sure I mentioned this as well. Um, oh, no. So uh, on that note, uh, that's all I have for today. All right, I stumbled across uh, not as many things, but a few things. So if I go over here. The first one was a tweet from Lior over at Microsoft, as managing or part of the Intune management team. Um, they compiled a new set of questions and answers for the latest autopilot feature. And uh, there is a tweet that goes to a LinkedIn post that will take us to the actual Microsoft post. Uh, but long story short, if you scroll down this post from May, you will see that there is a new compilation of uh, somewhere in the bottom here, where it went. Here, way in the bottom. Uh, a comment from today, uh, some point this morning, um, so I highly recommend to review those uh, changes. Uh, please note that these uh, latest enhancements uh, require Windows 11 as a client. You can still leverage Windows Autopilot for Windows 10, but you don't have all the features that you get when you have a Windows 11 client. So uh, make note of that one. Another thing I stumbled across was a quick little uh, beautiful video from Steve Weiner that we have showcased many here, many times here on, on the office hours, but he put together a YouTube video regarding uh, device attestation. So really well produced, highly recommend watching that one. And as usual, his videos are, are short and sweet to the point. Uh, usually introduced with a little bit of rant about something in the beginning and then dives into the technical stuff uh, after that. So I highly recommend that one. Thank you.